Animal Crossing New Horizons just had a pretty substantial update a few weeks back that brought a lot of new things into the mix. Its May update was pretty neat too, introducing the concept of puzzle-oriented islands that you must solve in order to get through the maze. But probably the most notable thing featured in the previous update was the expansion of the museum and the introduction of artwork to our island. Artwork is not new to Animal Crossing at all, but there's something a bit weird about Red's new haul of shady goods. Something a bit sinister that has been freaking some players out when they notice it. Once again, the pleasant world of Animal Crossing seems to be shedding some more light on the creepy and unsettling things it has tucked away within. This is the story of Animal Crossing's haunted artwork and the implications it has on Red. Being from the United States, a lot of us are kind of in lockdown at the moment, and Animal Crossing has sort of been a saving grace. Whether we're hunting artwork that will steal your soul, or the final piece to our fossil collection, we've been island bound for quite a while. Personally, I have a really weird schedule and I'm up pretty late, but that's also why I'm excited to partner with Verb to help them hit their goal of donating half a million Verb energy bars to healthcare workers who need a boost during these hard times. Verb energy bars are gluten-free and vegan, and utilize organic green tea to give you an espresso shot-like boost of energy without any jitters. They're only 90 calories, and perfect for my grind sessions where I shake every last tree on my island trying to find a free toilet. I'm a chocolate and peanut butter kind of guy, so their variety of flavors was right up my alley. If you haven't tried Verb before, you can try four flavors right now for just 95 cents. Just the cost of shipping. Or if you want to get a full bag, you can get 20% off. While Verb is a newer brand, they've sent over 400,000 bars to 10,000 healthcare workers in the last two months. So if you want to give a boost to your day and support a really nice cause, click the link in the description below to pick up some bars today. They'll help you get through those afternoon slumps and those late nights. And a huge thanks to Verb for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So, if it isn't aliens or creepy bunnies, of course it has to be ghosts. This is a mystery that I also was very surprised by when I first gained wind of it. New Horizons has taken old concepts from the previous games and sort of put a slightly new spin on things. I think Red in general represents this well. This fox has always served as the rival of Tom Nook ever since the first game. Always hustling, usually ripping off the player, but sometimes giving us something pretty slick. Of course, when you play with fire, you're bound to get burned. And that has always been the theme of Red's pop-up shop. It's scam central. As the games progressed, Red's services seemed to become even more secretive. It wasn't that he was just always randomly popping up in town anymore. Sometimes you had to be invited by a third party in order to gain access to his wares. And of course, even once that took place, you still had to keep your wits about you so you wouldn't get scammed into receiving a counterfeit. Fast forward to New Horizons and Red is running a new operation. He's rolled up in what he deems as his treasure trawler, a ship that's honestly seen better days. Inside, you'll find a slew of artwork and a few pieces of furniture. Just like previous games, you can only buy one piece of artwork per day. So despite taking place on a boat, the only thing that has sort of changed about Red's operation is how portable it is now, without having to break down his actual shop. But there's something strange going on here that wasn't really present in the other games, because whoever is supplying this artwork has included a bonus perk to it. And by bonus perk, I mean something really, really creepy. They're haunted. So depending on what fake paintings you pick up, these counterfeits actually can change depending on the time of day. Players unknowingly went to display their knockoffs at home once Blathers had denied their submissions to the museum. Even for knockoff artwork, it still looked pleasing as an item you could set up. So you'd set it up and then come back later and good grief, did, did that thing just move? Yes, in fact, a lot of the stuff has creepy changes. Paintings that were once happy appear to be sad and lonely. Eyes on paintings close and open at random. It definitely brings about the whole Scooby-Doo cliche of someone watching you from behind a painting. Except this time, there's no one there. It's just a painting and it has the ability to change on its own. So what gives? So there's a couple different ways we can look at this. But first I want to talk about the source. We don't know if Red manufactures his wares himself or if he gets them from a supplier. But with the change of his business now being based upon a sea vessel, his offerings have taken on a spookier form. These are the type of paintings you'd find stored inside of a pirate's treasure trove. Like, I can see these fancy paintings leaning up against giant heaps of gold and other treasures. But with every good treasure story, there seems to be a pirate's curse. Now, we don't know what happened to Red over the years, but the idea of him stumbling upon a treasure cove with his new boat-based business would be pretty funny. Perhaps he picked up a real cursed painting this way, and as a way to torture him forever, all his counterfeits going forward share an element of the curse, so people's eyes will always be drawn to their imperfections. Obviously, this is a baseless claim, 
but I couldn't help but humor the thought. There's also the thematic approach to these paintings. Pirating artwork really sucks for the original creators. The people who made these paintings are long dead, but the theme of buying pirated artwork and displaying it despite knowing it's pirated sort of is a clash of morals. We are able to identify these paintings as fakes because of blathers, so if you choose to display them afterwards, the moral dilemma sort of falls upon you. Mind you, you got scammed. You thought you were buying something original, but ended up not getting it. The real criminal here is for certain red, but the issue itself isn't so straightforward. It makes me wonder if these knockoffs are haunted for that reason too. Sort of a we're watching you type of ordeal, to constantly remind you that they are fake. I guess from an item perspective, it does breathe life into what the game deems as generally useless items, so it gives you a reason to hang on to a fake too. But ultimately, we can't really know for certain why these cursed artworks exist. Such an art, like the ancient statue, has been documented to begin floating around like it is truly possessed. Other people have documented ghostly figures appearing on the back of paintings. Is it just a fun gimmick to add alternative value to spoofed art? Or did Red stumble upon something he shouldn't have? We know ghosts exist in Animal Crossing. From Wisp to Jack, spirits are certainly established. But this is different. It feels different. It's not like someone going out of the way to pull a prank on us. It's environmental horror that's made to make us wonder. Perhaps we'll find out more as time goes on. But in the meantime, what do you think about these paintings? Is Red cursed? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this horrific spectacle. We'll be talking about aliens again real soon. So until my next video, cheers.